Hey everybody, thanks so much for coming. I'm Tali Sassone, an engineering manager with Firebase focused on app quality. And my name is Scott Brissenden. I'm also an engineering manager at Firebase, and I've been working to bring the Firebase platform to BigQuery. We're really excited to talk to you today about how to supercharge your app using Firebase and BigQuery together. We're going to dig into the value of BigQuery, but then we plan to apply it to a real app and real problems to see how it can help you and your users. And then we'll bring it all together at the end. So when we were thinking about how to describe the value of BigQuery, what was so exciting about it, we really felt like Philippe, developer advocate, said it best when he said, all of these products are pretty great, but BigQuery really takes the cake. Why is that? BigQuery allows you to store and collect a lot of your data across Firebase products. It also helps you dig in and analyze that data to solve problems and better understand your users. And not only that, but it keeps you secure and GDPR compliant by allowing for easy data takeout. But we don't want to just show you a bunch of text in a slide. Instead, we want to apply it to a real app. So today, we're going to talk to you about Friendly Picks, our app. Friendly Picks uses a lot of Firebase goodness. It uses auth, database, storage, and a lot more. And we're going to focus today on a bunch of product integrations with BigQuery. So we think Friendly Picks is pretty great. It allows you to share photos and comment with your friends. And we've been expanding. This is what it looks like. As you can tell, our PM Showbit really loves it. He's always taking pictures of his kids. Scott and I weren't invited to this birthday party, so we felt a little left out, but at least we could follow along and, and see all the fun that was happening. So we've recently started expanding this app to new markets, and we actually just launched in France, which was really exciting. We think that it's a great app, and so we're a little confused about why it's not getting more adoption, and a little concerned about some of the things we're seeing in analytics. So we're going to dig into that using Firebase and BigQuery. Today, we're going to focus on three main integrations, analytics, A-B testing, and Crashlytics. But before we get into that, let's show you how to get set up, because it's really easy. When we got it set up, all we had to do is go to the Settings page and find the Integrations tab that brought us the BigQuery chip. We clicked into that, and we were able to very quickly integrate across products, allowing for easy connection between Firebase and BigQuery. Once everything was set up, we could easily turn on and off integrations and view our data sets as needed. If you're like us, we really wanted to be able to test out BigQuery before we invested too heavily in it. That's why we're really excited about the BigQuery Sandbox announcement. Now you can try out BigQuery before you ever even enter a credit card. BigQuery already has a powerful free billing tier which allows you to have 10 gigabytes of storage and one terabyte of queries per month. And like I said, with the new Sandbox, you can get that value before you enter a credit card, and you're able to see 60 days worth of data. This allowed us to really test it out before we invested too heavily. Once you're linked, you're able to see all of your data in the BigQuery UI. And you can see on the side there, we can see each Firebase product including the new Firebase Cloud Messaging integration and Firebase Predictions, which we were really excited to recently launch. We learned that many of these integrations move data on a daily basis, but analytics had a real-time stream. And that was really important for us at Friendly Picks because that was the first place we had to dig into a user problem. As many of you may know, Google Analytics for Firebase is a super powerful tool that allows you to easily visualize the analytics from your app and understand how your users are using the application on a regular basis. On Friendly Picks, when we opened our analytics dashboard, we were pretty concerned. As you can see, we have a big retention problem, and it needs our attention right away. Not only that, but prediction shows us that this is going to continue and that our users are not going to stay with our app. So we have to solve this right away. That's where the analytics and BigQuery integration comes in. We can export our data over to BigQuery and dig in to understand how we might be able to solve this problem. Scott, can you show us that? Sure thing, Tali. I can definitely dig in and see why friendly Pix users are churning. But before I do that, I really need to understand 
what does BigQuery data look like when uh, analytics events are written there? So the first thing that everybody needs to know is that when you link your app to export analytics to BigQuery, all of your events are written to a single table. Each row in this table represents a single analytics event, and we actually pack a lot of information into these rows, so the data looks a lot like a JSON tree. We can look at the schema for a specific event, uh, for a single event together. So every event has an event date and an event timestamp, so you know when the event happened on the client device. Each event also includes an event name, which uniquely identifies the type of event. And out of the box, the Google Analytics for Firebase SDK logs about 50 events, including things like a first open event, the first time a user opens up your application, user engagement events that are logged periodically when the app is in the foreground, et cetera. In addition, the Friendly Picks team also took advantage of the capability of logging custom analytics events. And we're doing so to log photo upload events every time a photo is uploaded to our server. In addition to that, uh, analytics events can also include events parameters. And so this is an array of key value pairs. The key is the name of the parameter, and the value is an object that is effectively a union that can take one of an integer value, a float value, a string value, or a double value. At any time, only one will be set. And this structure is used because it allows one common schema to represent many different kinds of data, and it avoids you from having to join against other tables like you might have to in a more of a conventional relational uh, table layout. Now, analytics events also include a user pseudo ID, which uniquely identifies a specific installation of an application on a specific client device. So all events that will come from that app will have a, a unique ID. And this is useful for being able to relate events from the same uh, device together. There's also a user ID parameter, which by default is null. But this is something that you might want to set if you're interested in joining data in the analytics data set with data that you might have in other data sets, including if you wanted to join with, say, data in the Crashlytics BigQuery export. There's also a user properties array. And similar to the event parameters array that I talked about, there's a key and value um, object. Um, the Friendly Picks team is using this to um, store the number of posts for each of our users, as well as the user's influencer level. And that's just useful to have close to the data because we like to use it often. <laughs> Finally, there's some other properties that you might be interested in having, things like the device that the analytics event originated from, the location, the traffic source, the app information, including the release version, as well as the platform. So now that we know how analytics data is represented in BigQuery, I can shift my focus back to investigating our user retention problem. So for this exercise, I'm specifically interested in looking at daily user retention. And so that's for a you know, particular cohort of users who started using an app on a specific day. How engaged are they for the next set of days um, that follow? And I'm going to drill in and focus on the cohort of users that started using Friendly Picks on September the 1st and see how retention changed over time and see if I can generate some insights to make things better. So with that, we're going to switch to the demo. And I'm going to unlock my... So this is the BigQuery web UI, and I've pre-populated it with a query that computes user retention for that cohort of users that started out on September the 1st. I won't go through the low-level syntax of the query, but I will say that there's effectively three parts to it. In the first part, I'm identifying the cohort of users that started using the app on September the 1st by pulling out the user pseudo-identifier from all events that have the first open type that originated on September the 1st. In the second part of my query, I'm computing for each of the users in that cohort, or, cohort whether or not they were engaged for each of the following seven days. And then in the final part, I'm bringing it all together, and I'm computing the user retention number as the ratio of the number of engaged users per day divided by the total number of users in the, co in the cohort. And so we can run the query together. And the result here is exactly the row of the table that I showed you in the screenshot from the uh, Firebase Analytics dashboard. So that's you know, useful to have. So now that I've done this, we can start to use the power of BigQuery to drill in and answer questions that were not available to us through the Firebase Analytics dashboard um, out of the box. So we could look, look at things like, how does user retention vary when a user has uploaded a photo or has liked someone else's photo? 
We could look at how does retention uh, vary when we've sent a user a push notification to encourage re-engagement. Or we could slice and dice retention by a, a user property or a, uh, a user location or something like that. Now, since today the Friendly Picks application is currently launched in two countries, the United States and France, one thing that I'm interested in knowing is how does retention change for French users? And so we can do that quite easily by modifying the query that I've written, adding a statement to the where clause to filter for French users, and running the query again. And so when I do that, two things stand out. First, I see that there's 36 French users, so about 40% of our user base is in France. And the retention rate is quite a bit lower. And so if we switch back to the slides, here's what it looks like on a, on a chart. So the red line is French user retention. You can see it's, you know, it's almost half of what the uh, retention is for the rest of the world. So this is a pretty big insight. And Tali, I think if we can get French retention under control, we're going to be doing a lot better. Back to you. Thanks, Scott. All right, so we clearly have a retention and engagement problem with friendly picks. And we need to solve that quickly in a way that gets our users back to the app but doesn't annoy them in the process. As we've mentioned, we've recently launched to France. But what we didn't mention is that we do not have language translation in friendly picks. And unfortunately, based on how we built the app, it's quite expensive to add that. So we have a hypothesis that perhaps that's going to improve our attention, but we really want to be sure before we invest all that time. That's where Firebase A-B testing comes in. A-B testing allows us to try out multiple experiments to understand how it will work out in the wild before we fully invest and roll it out to our users. We went ahead and used A-B testing to try out translation of our app on just one screen to see if it was going to have a difference in retention of our users. After a couple weeks of collecting data, you can see that, yes, it did make a difference. And that was really exciting for us. We started to build some confidence that this was going to be the right way of moving forward and getting friendly picks in a healthier state. But it wasn't really clear what type of key metrics or users this type of change would impact. And we wanted to be really sure we understood it before we rolled out. And that's where BigQuery can really help us. Scott, can you show us? Absolutely, Tali. So before I start running queries, I think it's helpful for me to understand how does A-B testing integrate with BigQuery. And for, for that, we can go back to the schema of an analytics event in BigQuery that I showed you earlier. So when an A-B test is running for your experiment, all of your analytics events for users that are enrolled in the experiment will be annotated with an additional user property. And this property has a key which corresponds to the name of the A-B test. And the value will, will take on a, a value that represents membership of the user in either the control group or one of the variant groups for your experiment. And so you can use this to effectively slice any analytics query you could run against your BigQuery data set based on the membership of users in an A-B test. So once I knew this, I was interested in getting started with, my, with building my first query. And there's actually an interesting uh, new integration in the Firebase console on the A-B testing dashboard that made it easy to do that. So now there's a new view in BigQuery option on the uh, navigation menu. And when you click it, it will open up a new tab in your browser, and it will pre-populate it with a, a, a pre-built query. And what this query does out of the box is it computes counts of all of the different types of events that have happened while your A-B test is running, and then breaks them into groupings by event type, and further breaks them into groupings based on membership in a control group or one of your variant groups. This is what it looks like if I were to plot the results of this query in a graph, except that I'm only showing three event types here that the Friendly Picks team was specifically interested in looking at, user engagement events, screen views, and ad reward events. And so it was really easy for me to see here that for, membership, for users that were enrolled in my experiment variant, those three event types that I'm interested in were doing better. So that was a, a thing that was nice for me to know. But what we were really interested in knowing, given that the results of our A-B test seemed positive, I wanted to know that the retention improvements were really directed at French language users that were benefiting from translations and not due to some other unknown effect. And so for that, I was able to go back to the query that I showed you earlier. 
update the dates to point to September the 22nd, which is when we started our A-B test, and add two additional lines to filter the results based on users that were enrolled in the experiment and part of the variant group. And this is what the result looks like when I plot it on a graph. The line in red shows that uh, there is a significant improvement for French users who were enrolled in our variant groups. And so that was extremely positive to see. I was also able to run two additional queries to look at the impact to US users, and I noticed no difference between the control and the variant groups. So this gave me the information that I needed to know to go back to you, Tali, and say, I think we can ship this. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. So at this point, the Friendly Picks team was ready to celebrate. We really felt like we knew how to solve this problem, and we wanted to release it out to our users as soon as possible. But it was important to us that we were ready to track the stability of this release before it went out. That's where Firebase Crashlytics comes in. Firebase Crashlytics allows you to see all of your stability information in one easy-to-use dashboard. It tells us what's most important and what requires our attention right away. Not only that, but it shows you even more information, like the analytics events leading up to a crash, or breadcrumbs, as well as any custom keys and logs that you choose to add. So for the Friendly Picks team, we decided to add a key for any time a crash happened when the language was translated into French. And that way, we would be able to see if there were more crashes because of this recent change. Once that was all done and the app was converted, we were able to ship it confidently. And we were really excited to see what happened next. We did see some stability issues with the new release, which is pretty normal. But it was kind of hard to tell if this was due to the translation or not. And we really wanted to see a holistic understanding of what was going on. And that's how BigQuery could help us. We were able to export our Crashlytics data into BigQuery and better understand what was going on. So the Crashlytics BigQuery export has a lot of really useful information. It's got the stack trace, the blame frame. It also has environment information, like the device and if it's happening in the foreground or the background for the user. And it has advanced debugging tools, like breadcrumbs or keys and logs that I mentioned, and, easy, and even a customer user ID, which you can use to help link data across Firebase products. Along with the integration between Crashlytics and BigQuery, we were also really excited to see that there's a powerful Data Studio integration also available to us. Data Studio shows all of your data in an easy view within BigQuery and allows you to change your queries and see how they show up in chart and graph form. So that was really exciting. Scott, can you show us what it looked like for friendly picks? Sure thing, Tali. Can we switch back to the demo? So this is what friendly picks BigQuery data looks like in a Data Studio dashboard. And I was able to set this up in seconds, really, by cloning the new public Data Studio dashboard template and pointing it at our friendly picks data. Out of the box, you get a view that looks a little bit like the Crashlytics dashboard in the Firebase console. You can see crash trends over time. You get a breakdown of crashes by version, crashes by device, crashes by operating system. Down at the bottom, you can see the issue list, which is effectively a clustering of crashes that have similar stack traces, so you know which issues are the ones that you should focus on and, and, and prioritize fixing. You can also adjust the time range, and I've set this up for the week in which we were rolling out our experiment to production. Now, we're interested in looking at whether or not our new feature, French language translation, has introduced any new stability problems. And for that, I'm able to use the crashes by key feature that's built into this dashboard. And, I, and given that, you know, Tully described, we are now annotating all crashes with a key that represents the language that the user is actually was viewing when the crash happened. So I can come in here and I can um, filter by French language usage. And so under the hood, what it's doing is it's running a query uh, in BigQuery, and then it's going to show me the results. Cool. So now what I was able to see was that you know, previously there was about 90 crashes impacting the entire user population, only about 25 that were hitting the French user base. I have 40% French users, so that's actually a good sign. 
I can also then look through the issue list and I'm able to see that there are no unique issues that only impact the, the French users. So Tully, this gives me great confidence. I think there's no issues with this. We can ship it again. Awesome. Thanks, Scott. If we head back to the slides. So we were really excited as a Friendly Picks team to see that we had finally solved this retention issue. And we were hopeful that we would see the app continue to grow and expand to more and more markets. Now we know translated to the appropriate language. So Firebase and BigQuery was a really important integration to allow us to re-engage our users, understand the, Im the impact of a new release on them, and dig into our app stability and make sure that we had a quality experience. As I mentioned, there are many Firebase and BigQuery integrations. Notably, we have two new ones with predictions and Firebase cloud messaging that we definitely suggest you check out after this. Thank you so much for coming today. If you have any questions, we'll be over at the Ask Firebase booth right after this, and we would love to talk to you. Thanks so much.